Hey guys, we are back with the house model and we're going to be talking about troubleshooting. So um, hopefully as you start to learn more commands in Rhino, um, you'll be able to kind of explore new ones um, and the kind of self-teaching element of the program will become a lot easier. Uh, and so part of that of course is knowing how to troubleshoot and get yourself out of trouble when things aren't working. So um, the first thing that I would recommend is to keep your model close to the origin, um, which is this point where the green and red lines come in, and that's the zero, zero point. Um, if you are like importing things uh, or you're building far away from the origin, sometimes the display can get really wacky. Um, so yeah, if you're having some display issues and you've been like importing things or things aren't showing up properly, um, sometimes that can be because stuff is too far away. Um, and the way that you can check that is if you just use the zoom command, you'll see that you have some different options out here. And if you just type in E for extents and hit enter, it'll zoom out to show you everything that's present on your board. Um, sometimes if you do that and you are zoomed out too far, you can't actually see what's present. So control A will show you everything highlighted. Um, maybe just to illustrate this, let's like move this super far away. So now like I know that I have stuff in the origin, but the house kind of is floating somewhere out in the ether. Um, so we'll do zoom extents. I can see it out here, but it's like a little grain of sand. Maybe it's hard to see. And then this will show you, it'll show you that yellow. It's a little easier. Um, so now that I know that that's over here, if you're having trouble like dragging it back to the origin, you can just actually use the move tool, click anywhere close to or on the model, and then um, it says point to move to. So you can either drag it or you can actually type in different coordinates for moving things. So if you just type in zero and hit enter, then it will zoom back to the origin for you. Um, of course, now I don't know where the origin is, so uh, you can either do another zoom extents um, command, or I can go into um, maybe like select objects, zoom, and then selected, and that'll bring me back to whatever I have selected. So that helps a little bit with navigation. Um, Sometimes your viewports, you can like rotate them um, and you can change the views. So I can maybe set this to like isometric to change. Um, but if you want to get back to the way that um, your viewports were originally, the command is for view. And that sends you back to, um, to show you kind of the original ones. Type it in again, and then it'll reset all of them to top, perspective, front, and right, which are the um, the typical aspects that you would see. Um, you can also, if you kind of accidentally get rid of any of this information over here, uh, especially the layers and properties panels, those are probably the ones you'll be using the most. Everything is shown under this panels uh, drop-down menu. So objects, properties, and layers, you can see I have them checked as well as some others. I think these are just the defaults, um, but you can always find them there if you end up losing them. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is finding new commands. So um, if you think that Rhino should be able to do something that seems pretty straightforward, it probably can. It's just a matter of finding the command or set of commands that will allow you to do it. Um, and so I do this all the time, like going through these panels up here um, just to see what is available to you. So maybe let's go through something um, as kind of an example. So maybe I want like, um, like a ridiculous kind of sculpture in the front yard. This is going to be really nice. <clears throat> okay, so let's say that I want these to be uh, made into one object together, um, but I don't really know how to do that. So I have these two objects, um, 
I can choose curves, surfaces, solids, mesh, dimension, transform, etc. Let's choose solid because I know that there are two solids. So I know that like these are for creating solids, um, extruding curves, offsets, union, difference, intersection, boolean to us. So I know boolean union is the one that I want. Um, if you're not sure what these are, then you can always just Google and um, check that forum that I put in the Miro um, software troubleshooting and it has a list of all of the commands and explains what they do and that's a super helpful tool. Um, I use it all the time when I am not super sure. Um, you can always just try them but sometimes the explanation is exactly what you need um, or you can google keywords and find new commands that way. So select surfaces or poly surfaces to union. Um, Sometimes when you're using a new command and it tells you what to select, you're not actually sure if your objects will match that. Um, so one tool that I really like in this scenario and when a command isn't working to double check what type of objects I'm working with is the what command. Um, so if you type in what when you've selected an object, it will give you all of this information. So this can be super, super helpful. Um, yeah, especially when, when commands aren't working, maybe it says like, um, you know, this command won't work for this object. So then you just type in what to see what you're actually working with. So now I know my sphere is a valid surface and it's closed. And those are really helpful things to know. So um, let's go back to that Boolean union command, which I know is located there. Um, and uh, yeah, that worked out just fine. So now it's actually one, uh, one object. Um, another thing that's kind of nice to know about is reading the command line. Um, when you are watching tutorials online or you're trying to look for problems in your own modeling, um, reading the command line can be really helpful. So basically it tells you uh, all the different commands that you have been using and then the functions that it's running in the background to actually uh, make those commands work. It can also give you options, right? So like when we went into Zoom, it gives you all of these options. So sometimes if a command isn't working, you can go and check out what all of the options are and try changing them. Um, they should be fairly straightforward, but again, you can always double check in that, um, in that list of all of the commands, it'll tell you what all of these options do. Um, another really simple thing but often overlooked that I want to bring to your attention is that sometimes when you are trying to run a command but nothing is really working, like you're clicking and it won't move, um, sometimes you're accidentally locked into a command up here um, but just don't know it. So sometimes, yeah, like you, if you're trying to move things or something and it's not working, just check up here and it'll say if you're in a command. And you can hit the escape key at any time. Um, so yeah, if things seem kind of stuck to me, I usually just mash the escape key and see if that helps. And then the last thing I'll bring up is just searching the Rhino forums. So this is that list of Rhino commands that I had talked about. Um, I like to just control F and see what comes up for different objects. Um, so yeah, you can see kind of what options there are and it'll give you a little bit of information too. So it'll tell you exactly what it does, what types of objects you need um, in order to complete the command. It'll give you a bunch of like pointers, reasons that it might fail. Um, so, and then sometimes it'll give you a tutorial video as well. So I find this to be probably one of the more helpful resources out there for Rhino and finding new commands and troubleshooting. I also find there's typically um, quite a lot of resources out there for when commands are failing, um, which is fortunate um, because a lot of people use Rhino. And so if you just type in the actual command that you're using and then not working, <laughs> a lot of times you'll see um, tons of different uh, answers in forums. Um, the McNeil forum is really good. They're the ones who create Rhino. Um, and then lots of YouTube videos that show different reasons that things might fail or how to work. Um, 
sometimes I have found it useful when um, when people post in forums, they'll sometimes upload their 3D models and then people will fix them and re-upload those models. And so if you look at the completed models, you can sometimes glean a little bit of information from those. Um, yeah, so like this person's uploaded their 3DM file and then somebody else um, kind of updated it and then uh, did the Boolean and re-uploaded. So um, those can be useful to look at as well. And that's all I've got for troubleshooting in Rhino. Um, again, sometimes your best resources are each other and also the upper year students. So um, definitely try, uh, you know, the tips that I've shown here. But if you can't figure out why something isn't working, for sure upload your, um, your file and your question to the Canvas, the Miro, or the MLA Miro Exchange, and hopefully somebody can help you out.